We introduced the need for a nonlinear solver. Now let's see how does this method go about solving a nonlinear problem. Let's start with this system which has a nonlinear response. Now this could be any nonlinear problem we can come across in structural mechanics. Remember that we do not know the response yet. The goal is to calculate the displacement in the system for an applied force of F sub A. Start with a zero displacement system and an initial estimate of stiffness. What estimate we use does not dictate the accuracy, but rather the closer the estimate, the faster the convergence of the method. Okay, so for the applied load F sub A, the resultant displacement is now calculated as U1. Now impose this displacement to the system and calculate the sum of all the internal forces generated in the system, in the elements, and this is called F sub 1. If the system is in equilibrium, then F sub A equals F sub 1. But clearly that's not the case here, so the calculate displacement is incorrect. This is called the first iteration. Now in the next iteration, we start from this displacement stage, we recalculate the estimate of the stiffness of the system, and once again calculate the final displacement for the applied force F sub A. Now the displacement is U sub 2. And once again, we calculate the internal forces that are developed in the elements in the system due to this displacement and compare their sum against the applied force F sub A. Notice that while there is still some difference between the two, this difference is smaller than earlier. This is called the second iteration. We continue doing these iterations until the difference between the calculated internal forces F sub I and the applied force F sub A is zero. But in reality, it takes infinite iterations before this difference actually goes to absolute zero, and this is not practical. So we define the tolerance for this difference in the forces and accept a solution when the difference between the internal forces and the applied force is less than or equal to this tolerance. As you can see, we are performing iterations until the calculated internal forces converge to the applied forces, again within the tolerance. In this case, we ran through five iterations to converge. Once that's achieved, this solution is known as the force converged solution, and the user-defined tolerance is called the convergence criteria. Now keep in mind that for simplicity, we are showing a curve with a single stiffness being iterated on as to more clearly illustrate the concept. Actual structures, when broken down into finite elements, will have an entire matrix of stiffness terms. We typically use a square root sum of the squares or SRSS method to compute the scalar equivalent for the forces across the model to check for convergence. So to summarize the procedure, one, start with zero displacement or displacements from the previous time step. Two, linearize and evaluate the stiffness matrix K based on the current displacements U and other variables such as nonlinear materials and contact status. This is our stiffness estimate. Three, compute the internal forces from the element stresses, which are derived from the strains and hence the current displacements. Four, calculate the displacement increment delta U using this equation of the applied force, internal force, and the stiffness matrix. Five, add the displacement increment we just computed, delta U, to the current displacement vector to obtain the next approximation of displacement. Six, calculate the residual force using this equation. If the residual force is less than the specified convergence criteria, then the solution is converged. If it is not, then the above steps are repeated.